I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today we're going to show you how to check your squish on your Sherco 250 or 300 two-stroke dirt bike. Now the reason you want to do this is it's a critical measurement for your bike to run correctly and when you're rebuilding your top end there's going to be several different sizes of base gaskets available so you want to make sure you get the correct one in there. To do this job you need a variety of base gaskets you also need a straight edge. I recommend picking up one of these parallels. You're also going to need a set of feeler gauges. Now that's all you have to have to get this job done, but we want to verify our work. So it's nice to have some eighth inch solder, like a rosin core or something that's hollow through the middle. So it squishes easy. And then you're going to want to have some digital calipers and a torque wrench. We're in the process of reassembling the top end on this Sherco SE300. If you need to know how to get to this point in detail, be sure to check out our top end rebuild video. Now this is gonna be the same process for all of the Sherco two strokes, but you do wanna to refer to your model specific service manual to get the correct specs for your bike. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a 0.5 millimeter base gasket and set it in place. Next, we're gonna install the cylinder and we don't have the rings on our piston yet since we're gonna take the cylinder right back off. And we're gonna to torque the cylinder base nuts in a couple steps, first 20 Newton meters, and then take them up to 35 Newton meters. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and rotate the piston to its highest point. Now we're gonna set our straight edge right above our wrist pin. And that's because the piston can actually rock back and forth. So the center is going to be the accurate point to measure. So I'm just going to roll this back and forth and make sure I'm at the highest point. And if you want to get really technical, you can use a dial indicator to verify that. And when you slide your filler gauge underneath that straight edge, you want to choose the filler gauge that just has a slight drag to it. So in our case, that's 0.08 millimeters. Now, if you didn't measure any clearance here, that means you have a positive deck height, then you're definitely gonna to need to adjust it. So you could set this on top of the piston and then measure out to the cylinder and see what that clearance is. Now with this measurement, it doesn't hurt to check it a couple times. Just because we're not using a dial indicator, you need to make sure this is accurate and you're getting the same reading every time. So if we look at our manual, we're gonna start by using the numbers on the left column. Since we're measuring from the top of the cylinder down to our piston, that measurement is actually a negative number. So we're negative 0.08 millimeters, and that actually falls right in spec for the 1.7 millimeter squish, which means we actually have the correct gasket. But if you measured, let's say you're negative 0.16 millimeters, then you're actually gonna to have to tighten up your squish bend. So what you're gonna do is use a thinner base gasket. You can just compare those numbers to the chart. So if you measured 0.16, then you'd use that 0.4 millimeter base gasket, and that should bring you into the 1.7 millimeter squish range. On the other hand, if your measurement was bigger or greater than negative 0.05 millimeters, you're gonna need a thicker base gasket, and that way it's gonna loosen up that squish band and get you in the correct range. Again, just use the chart, that's gonna help guide you. If you need to double stack base gaskets, that's gonna be just fine. So what we've shown you is all you really have to do, but if you wanna verify your squish, what you can do is use a piece of solder, cut it just like we have. You're gonna file the ends flat and then you want a little loop in it so you can adjust it so it contacts all the way to the cylinder wall across the same direction as your wrist pin is going to the other cylinder wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that. You need to make sure the loop isn't big enough that it's actually gonna hit on that squish band as well. That's why we have that small loop in there. I'm gonna dab a little bit of grease on there just to hold it in place so it's not moving around in there. You wanna make sure the piston is about 10 millimeters before top dead center. And then we're gonna install the cylinder head and we're not gonna install the O-rings at this time just because they're gonna get squished down anyway and they're not gonna change our reading. After that, you can install the cylinder head bolts. We're gonna to torque those in a crisscross pattern to 25 Newton meters. From the left side of the bike, rotate the engine counterclockwise just past top dead center and then you can remove the cylinder head. Now we can remove the solder and you're gonna measure this on each side as far out on the end as you can. If you get different measurements from side to side, what you're gonna do is find the average 
So add those together, then divide by two. With ours, you can see that we measured right in spec with our current base gasket. Now we're confident that our bike is gonna run at peak performance when we go back together. If you have any questions about this process, leave those down in the comments below. And if you need to know how to get your top end back together, we're gonna to take this apart and get it ready for final assembly. So click this link if you need to know how to do all that stuff and make sure you subscribe to our channel. And if you need any parts or accessories for your bike, you can find those on our website. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.